It's fierce and it's agile. The Yamaha Raptor 700. I'm Trevor from DinoJet and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install a Power Commander 5 on this beast. Before we get to the installation of the Power Commander 5, I'm gonna go over the tools that I'll be using today for the install. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench, some socket extensions, a 10 millimeter socket, a ratchet, a small flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a four millimeter Allen. First step of the install will be to remove the seat. If you go directly in the back of the vehicle underneath the tail light, there'll be a little slot with a lever. You'll pull directly back and pop the seat right off. After removing the seat, we're gonna remove the top of the air box just to make it a little bit easier for us to get to the battery. On top of the battery, there's a bracket with 10 millimeter bolts. We'll have to remove the bracket and remove the negative ground cable to the battery before removing any wires. Remove the negative. After removing the negative ground cable from the battery, you're gonna start the process of removing the top shroud over the gas tank, the front shroud over the radiator, and the side fairings from the bike. While removing the shroud, after you get the other 10 millimeter bolt out, you're gonna come down to these Allen head bolts. There's gonna be a 10 millimeter nut on both sides on the back of them. So after the removal of the top shrouds, when you come down to the front of the fairings to get these side fairings off, you're gonna remove these two push pins and the 10 millimeter bolt that's right behind it. Come up and disconnect your gauge cluster and the whole front plastic should come off. The next step is you're gonna remove the gas tank from the bike. You're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts on the back side, and then two 10 millimeter bolts on the front side right behind the radiator. Once you get those bolts removed, you're gonna to come to the top, remove your electrical connector to the gas tank, and remove your fill line. Now that everything's removed from the bike, we can start connecting the power commander. We're gonna start with the power commander in the rear of the bike and route the harness on the left side up towards the engine.
Once you have the power commander in the rear of the vehicle and you've routed down the left side of the air box, you're going to come to your first connector, which is going to be your negative ground connector. We're going to leave this alone until we finish the rest of the install of the power commander. Once you have your power commander routed, the first connector you're going to come to is going to be your crank connector. It's going to be a white two pin connector on the left side of the throttle body. Make sure when you're doing the install that you plug it into the white connector and not the gray. We get a lot of phone calls in the dyno jet of people plugging into the wrong connector. Once you have it unplugged, you're going to get your power commander harness and you're going to plug directly in line with that connector. Once you have the power commander plugged into the crank, you're going to route the wire up towards the fuel injector. The fuel injector is going to be directly in front of the fuel rail and it's going to be a two pin connector. You're going to take that connector off, place the power commander connector over the fuel injector and then plug in line with the stock harness. After connecting your fuel injector connectors, you're going to route your TPS connectors underneath the fuel rail and locate the TPS connector on the right side of the throttle body. You're going to unplug that connector and then plug in line your Power Commander 5. Once you have your TPS connectors connected, you're going to continue routing the Power Commander 5 harness up towards the front of the bike and locate your ignition coil, which is right behind the right headlight of the bike. You're going to get your Power Commander 5 harness, you're going to unplug the bottom connector with the orange wire and plug in line with the Power Commander 5 green wire. And then plug the Power Commander 5 green and white wire back into the bottom of the ignition coil. You'll then remove the top red wire and plug in line with the red power commander wire. And then plug the power commander red wire to the top of the ignition coil. After getting your power commander fully routed through the bike and all your connectors hooked up, what I personally like to do is put the tank back on and connect the tank just to check for clearance issues and make sure there's no rubbing or anything bunched up underneath the tank with the harness. After you have all that put back together, you can go ahead and get your ground wire from the power commander and connect it to your negative battery terminal. Now that your Power Commander 5 is hooked up to the battery, your installation process is done. You can now take the supplied dual lock and use it to secure the Power Commander to the bike so it's not moving around while you're riding. You can also take the supplied zip ties and tidy up the wiring harness so it's not rubbing around on any components while you're riding. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also visit us at dinojet.com to see all the available tunes for the Yamaha Raptor 700. Now remember, keep on ripping. Oh yeah.